Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. Today's date is August 25th, 2021. And I'm going to start off today's videos with kind of a part two to the last video that I put up yesterday. So that video was about vaccine hesitancy among the, basically you could say the Republican base, uh, vaccine hesitancy and anti-vax ideology. It's kind of a right-wing political project. And then tying that into the decades of far-right programming that the capitalist class has been putting out there in order to shore up support for neoliberal efforts at deregulation and privatization and just distrust of anything public and um, getting people less interested in fighting for, you know, something more closely resembling workers' rights and benefits and things like that. So while that is a very vocal subset of the unvaccinated population in the United States, people who are really ideologically committed to that as part of a far right political project and identity. There's another subset of the unvaccinated population, which is very sizable. And that is African Americans are, I believe, the single largest demographic of unvaccinated people. So we are going to do a story about that. This is completely separate from and unrelated to in other words, the motivations are very different. So really shouldn't be, I think, addressed in the same video. Um, we hear a lot from the very vocal, very frustrating and maddening, mostly white right wing that's going on about the New World Order and all this stuff and how the vaccines are, you know, the mark of the beast and they have a microchip from Bill Gates. And that can really suck a lot of the air out of the room listening to and trying to push back on those people. And we can forget that there are actually are other people who have very good reasons to be very mistrustful of the U.S. government and anything that the U.S. government says. And that's what this is about. So let's get into the first of two articles we're going to read. This is from Duke University by Sidney Livingston. The title of the article is Black Americans Vaccine Hesitancy is Grounded in More Than Mistrust. This is from April 8th, 2021. COVID-19 is considered a general pandemic, but its effects have been disproportionate along the lines of race and ethnicity. Though vaccines may serve as our best chance to put an end to COVID, the problem of vaccine hesitancy amongst black people in the US is particularly pervasive and grounded by more than simple mistrust. Gary Bennett, PhD, discussed the issue of complex determinants of vaccine hesitancy among black Americans on Monday, April 5th. Bennett is a professor of psychology, neuroscience, global health, and medicine at Duke, as well as director of Duke Digital Health and vice provost for undergraduate education. Quote, at the end of the day, we're dealing with an issue that demands pragmatic attention, Bennett said. How do we get shots in arms? Unquote. It turns out the answer is quite complex and historically confounded. While black people have experienced much higher burdens from COVID-19, despite contracting the disease at a similar rate to whites, they have been disproportionately vaccinated at lower rates than white people. Quote, access matters and it matters a lot, unquote, Bennett said. One clear example of decreased access for black Americans is that fewer vaccination sites are located in areas with high concentrations of black people. However, Bennett said access does not simply equal place. Quote, how much friction are you creating in this process? He prompted, unquote, pointing to examples of complicated registration systems, inadequate public transportation to vaccine sites, or overall distance from a location. All of these factors already limit who is able to access vaccinations without the added influences of reduced vaccine uptake due to vaccine hesitancy. So there's a graphic there from the um, presentation. It says access does not equal place. You have to consider logistics, registration, gating, siting, literacy and numeracy, appointment timing, and vaccine characteristics. Continuing, vaccine hesitancy was listed by the World Health Organization as a top 10 global threat in 2019 when vaccines were preventing two to three million deaths per year in the pre-COVID era. Though Bennett said that vaccine hesitancy, quote, has been with us for a long time, there are, quote, real consequences to continued reluctance and refusal to get vaccinated with heightened risks due to the nature of the pandemic. 
Bennett said that many claims around hesitancy blame communities for their inability to access vaccines, but this fails to consider or to change the underlying behaviors that drive hesitancy. Bennett outlined these underlying drivers as one, mistrust, two, social norms, and three, understandable uncertainties. There's another slide there on the screen. It's titled Vaccination Sites in Atlanta, and then it it shades the map of Atlanta purple for 100% white towards red for 0% white, and you can see that there's a far higher concentration of vaccination sites in the predominantly white neighborhoods. Continuing, quote, it's not just mistrust of the medical system, it's mistrust of institutions, Bennett said. There's a lot of reasons for black people to mistrust institutions. The murder of George Floyd stands as one poignant contemporary example, but, quote, Tuskegee still looms large in the minds of black Americans, unquote. The Tuskegee experiment exploited 600 black men working as sharecroppers who had syphilis by knowingly withholding treatment and simply seeing what happened to their bodies as a result of the disease for over 40 years. This experiment was not the first of its kind. Whole body radiation was tested on black people. Fistula surgery was developed on enslaved black women by the, quote, father of modern gynecology. The immortal cells of Henrietta Lacks, a black woman, have been used far and wide to advance science after a sample of her cancerous cervix was unknowingly stolen from her. Modern studies have also shown how different implicit biases of black patients shape their treatment outcomes due to skewed physician perceptions. And there's a graphic there also showing the Capitol riot, the murder of George Floyd, and the Jim Crow era all exemplify the pervasive institutionalized racism that erodes black trust in U.S. institutions of all kinds. Continuing, our social networks are also vitally important to influencing our feelings about receiving the COVID vaccine. In black communities, Bennett said, fewer people in their networks have gotten vaccinations, and those who have received vaccines are less vocal about it, leading to a collective lack of interest in receiving vaccinations. These two factors, paired with understandable uncertainties about the side effects of the vaccine, or potentially getting COVID itself, generate the need to change our approaches to vaccine hesitancy and increased uptake amongst black communities in the U.S. So there's a little more of that article. I'm going to switch to another article. This is from Augusta University by Tony Baker from August 23rd, 2021. It's titled Young Age, Housing Insecurity, Primary Factors in Vaccine Hesitancy Among African Americans. And there is a picture there of Dr. Justin Xavier Moore. So the article says, a survey of mostly African American adults living in and around one of Georgia's largest cities found that COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy was greatest among those aged 18 to 29, investigators say. Quote, age is the main driver, unquote, says Dr. Justin Xavier Moore, epidemiologist at the Medical College of Georgia at Augusta University. With those 18 to 29-year-olds surveyed, having 21-fold increased odds of being vaccine-resistant compared to those 50 and older. COVID-related housing insecurity, difficulty paying the rent or mortgage, or even eviction, increased the odds of vaccine resistance sevenfold, and was the next strongest association they found in one of the first studies examining factors related to vaccine hesitancy among a large African-American community sample, says Moore, corresponding author of the study, published in a special edition of the journal Vaccines, quote, These findings highlight an important issue and necessity for innovative and proactive approaches in reaching two vulnerable populations, the younger African-American population that may believe that their risk of severe COVID-19 and mortality are low due to their youth and little to no chronic medical conditions, and participants with housing insecurity due to COVID-19 who may have limited or no reliable interactions with healthcare systems, unquote, the investigators write. While reduced vaccine hesitancy among African Americans may result from increasing vaccination rates of all Americans, healthcare systems and organizations must still work to build trust and rapport with these communities with increased diversity of medical professionals, community services, and transparency about vaccine facts, concluded the investigators 
which included colleagues at the Department of Behavioral Health Sciences at St. Louis University in Missouri. The research team surveyed 257 adults living in Augusta and the surrounding communities of Hepzibah, Georgia, and North Augusta and Aiken, South Carolina, during six events starting December 5th, 2020, a little more than a week before the first person in the United States, ICU nurse Sandra Lindsay from New York City, received the vaccine and running through April 17, 2021. The community events were held by 100 black men of Augusta, a not-for-profit organization focused on improving people's lives, in collaboration with MCG, the state's public medical school, to bring information and eventually the vaccine directly to those communities. Quote, we are trying to meet people where they are and trying to break down barriers in the sense of having health care providers that look like them who are going to have real conversations with them about why they may be hesitant and what questions they have, unquote, Moore says. The gatherings were mostly in black churches and barber shops, so nearly 100% of those taking the anonymous three-page survey were African American. Investigators asked about a wide variety of demographics, like age and education, and about health behavior, like current alcohol or cigarette use, and whether they took the flu vaccine. They also asked COVID-specific questions, like whether they wore face masks or had lost a job or home. They classified responders as resistant, hesitant, or acceptant of receiving the new COVID-19 vaccines. They found about one-third, 31.9%, were hesitant or resistant to receiving a vaccine. Those hesitant were more likely to be young, a median age of 31, while the median age of the acceptant individuals was 61. A greater percentage, 57.1, of those considered resistant were female, and they were more likely to be employed full-time, but less likely to have health insurance. They had fewer comorbidities, like high blood pressure and diabetes, compared to acceptant individuals, but they were also more likely to be smokers than those in the other two categories, and less likely to have ever received a flu shot. Those with more chronic health problems, like high blood pressure, were least likely to be vaccine resistant. Among the resistant, 33.3% reported housing insecurity, compared with 10% and 6.9% for hesitant and acceptant participants, respectively. About half the participants also had not been tested for the novel coronavirus when they were surveyed, more evidence that, quote, public health prevention strategies and infrastructures have largely failed to protect communities of color, low-income neighborhoods, essential workers, and those with variable employment status, unquote, the investigators write. More expected hesitancy to be more homogenous across the African-American individuals surveyed because of the untenable history they share. Lack of trust resulting from medical exploitation and abuse is connected to ethnicity, and racial inequalities have undoubtedly contributed to the disproportionate COVID-19 disease burden on African-American individuals, Moore and his colleagues say. Quote, there are systemic issues that have disproportionately affected black and brown communities for a long time in this country, he says. Unquote. Noting that both black men and women have a higher allostatic load. It's basically stress. It's how much your body's coping with. Where challenges faced exceed the ability to cope at a younger age compared to their non-Hispanic white counterparts. Quote, allostatic load is the wear and tear on the body due to external stressors that happen within your environment over a life course, unquote, Moore says. That stress results in chronically higher levels of the stress hormone cortisol, which increases inflammation, which in turn increases blood pressure and a host of other health problems from heart disease to cancer. Quote, if one group is under elevated stress simply because of their complexion compared to their counterparts, their reaction to everything is going to be different, he says. It's going to explain some of the environment gene interactions we are seeing, unquote, and so do cultural differences like unhealthy diets passed down for generations, Moore says. The pandemic, which has been stressful for everyone, highlights these areas of concern, Moore adds. To identify the best way to help those most affected, the investigators are now taking the key factors of hesitancy they found and having targeted conversations to find the reasons behind them, he says. At the moment, the investigators can only make hypotheses about their findings. For example, younger individuals may be more susceptible to misinformation and disinformation. What's disinformation? Deliberate 
strategically calculated misinformation on social media and online. Quote, there may be low self-perceived risk among the young demographic. The I personally don't fear this disease, therefore I don't need see the need to get the shot, coupled with misinformation regarding COVID-19, which further complicates this paradigm, Moore says. Housing insecurity, which was such a prominent factor, may be associated with lower socioeconomic circumstances, including working in frontline jobs that may increase potential exposure and limit the ability to take protective precautions, Moore says. In his conversations with other young people, Moore also hears the recurring issue of time, that they need more time to ensure the vaccine is safe. Moore is also working with Dr. Veronica L. Womack, Executive Director of Georgia College and State University's Rural Studies Institute, to develop targeted messaging for those living in rural and underserved Georgia communities that will help promote COVID vaccination. Black Americans are both disproportionately affected by COVID-19 and less likely to be vaccinated against it than whites, Moore and his colleagues write. Black Americans are nearly three times more likely to be hospitalized and twice as likely to die from COVID-19. The so-called Georgia Black Belt, which runs from the southwest corner of the state through middle and central eastern Georgia, where the Augusta area is located, has a wide range of health disparities in common conditions like stroke, cardiovascular disease, and cancer, as well as infectious diseases like COVID-19. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Social Vulnerability Index and Area Deprivation Index identify areas like the Georgia Black Belt as, quote, markedly vulnerable, under-resourced, and underserved communities, unquote, the investigators write. But the vulnerability of these areas and residents was not recognized early in the pandemic, which delayed mitigation efforts, like ensuring access to personal protective equipment. Subsequent delays in availability of testing and later vaccination, they write, grew the significant body of evidence to the effect of racism on health behaviors and outcomes. The growth, particularly of online sources of misinformation about both the disease and the vaccine, have further fueled the deleterious impacts of these inactions, Moore says, quote, to maximize the efficacy of a vaccine, you want nine out of 10 people saying they will get it, Moore says, quote, we had more than 30 percent, about one third, saying they are not going to get vaccinated. We wouldn't be here if we would have had a larger uptake of the vaccine within the first three or four months of it being available. We wouldn't have the issues we're seeing regarding increased rates of COVID-19 infection. He notes that as they began their meetings and surveys, little was known about the vaccine, but they had good information about safety and efficacy by the subsequent gatherings. The Georgia Department of Public Health received its first vaccine shipment December 14, 2020. The same day, the first person in the country was vaccinated, and the first peer-reviewed study about the vaccine was published two days later. In August, the number of vaccinated Americans was reaching 170 million, or about 50.8 percent of the population. But as late as early June, less than a quarter of black Americans had received their first vaccine dose, although some recent reports indicate the rate of vaccination among black and Hispanic populations is starting to improve. Previous studies have indicated that black Americans are three times more likely to be unsure or unwilling to receive the vaccine compared to whites. The research was funded by the National Institute on Minority Health and Health Disparities of the National Institutes of Health. And there's a link to the full study there. So that's the end of the second article. That was a great article, by the way. I wanted to make sure to cover this because, like I said before, so much of the energy can get put onto dealing with the very frustrating and very energy draining right wing, which makes everything about them. And it can just be really easy to get caught up in that because it's just such drama. They have so many outlets for their propaganda. And then really, you know, underserved people who don't have a voice, uh, their concerns and their problems and afflictions and the situations that they're dealing with don't really get any attention. So case in point, um, you know, I seized on the uh, story about the reactionaries first because I'm already primed up and keyed up on that. And it is frustrating. And I wanted to attack and defuse 
some of that situation and, you know, clear that out because it can build up in your system when you're talking about politics during the pandemic. And, um, you know, I just I had to spend some time unpacking all that shit and doing a video about it. And then I knew damn well, because I've read it before, that there's still, uh, you know, a large segment of the still unvaccinated population is black Americans. And, you know, you know immediately in that case, it's not like ideologically driven in the sense of, I mean, coming from that same right wing place of like, it's the new world order. It's like, no, this is a community that's been hurt a million times in really grievous ways. Also, there are just way fewer resources and less, you know, transportation, just being able to get to a place that has a clinic or is the clinic open during the hours that you can get there, all kinds of things. So if anyone out there listening has more resources you would like to suggest for me to cover on the channel about this, I would love it because we do spend a lot of time analyzing the right wing that is leading this country around by the nose and we do need to stay grounded and not get too carried away by that and then forget about some of the other situations that are going on. So I would appreciate that if you have any suggestions along those lines. Also, if you're listening to this and you haven't been vaccinated, I definitely recommend it. If you don't uh, know how to get connected with a vaccination clinic or site, uh, it may be easier than you think. Reach out in the comments. I am happy to give you some time and try to help connect you with resources like a list of where you can go or numbers to call in your area about setting that up. I know we have hooked at least one person up so far with uh, a list of local resources in their area. So that's something that I and others in the community are happy to help you do. Um, this channel is not just about like, I make videos and you all sit there and listen. I'm doing this as part of a movement and, and as a community and uh, you know we're, we need to help each other. So if you're interested in that, if you have questions about the vaccine, uh, I, you know, I mean, I've been reading about it as much as probably anybody, and uh, I'm happy to help point you towards some resources. You know, if you have questions about safety and things like that, I can point you to some resources that hopefully can clear things up. Uh, you know, most people they get a few, like maybe a headache. Um, or some muscle aches for like a few days, maybe up to a week, um, and then that's it. That And many people do get that, but it also is very mild, passes in a few days. And then you've just dramatically decreased your chances of ending up in the hospital if you do get COVID, because the vaccine trains your body to recognize COVID and to fight it off more quickly if you actually catch a case of it. So you're basically... It's like, you know, sports practice for your immune system. Basically, you're running a training exercise by getting the vaccine that teaches your body what COVID looks like and that it is a problem. Then if you catch it, your body already has antibodies prepared and knows what to do. So you don't get as sick. Your viral load drops more quickly. Uh, you're a little less contagious, although keep wearing your mask. So anyway, I hope that this has been helpful and you know, it's a good uh, just sort of wake up call to like stop, take a breath and not let the right wing take total hold of the narrative. Now, all of that said, we've got somebody who isn't Trump in the White House now is actually not even from Trump's party. We got Joe Biden who ran on public option. Yeah, that's nowhere. <laughs> We're not getting I mean, they for people who got uh, unemployment related to p the pandemic, they did uh, give more of a subsidy to your health insurance if you bought a plan through the Obamacare ACA marketplace. So they paid for a little bit more of your health insurance, but just for this year. It's a far cry from doing the public option that was on Joe Biden's website. Of course, he never talked about it. So, you know, we were very suspicious that, he, you know, he would actually fight for it. And indeed, he hasn't. He hasn't even mentioned it uh, as far as I know. Same thing with $15 minimum wage. Same thing with the national mask mandate, which was discussed and Honestly, as we've said on this channel, vaccines, good, get one. As long as, you know, your healthcare provider doesn't tell you that you have a health condition which precludes it, a few people will have that. Check with your provider if you have one or get one and, you know, have it checked out. Uh, most people don't, though. Most people can get the vaccine. But anyway, like I said, the vaccine will cut down for most people on your symptoms 
Some people still get a breakthrough case anyway, but it lowers your odds of that. And it will decrease your contagiousness. It will make you less likely to spread it, but people who have the vaccine can still spread it. So wear the mask. Masks are the best thing for transmission. So really, whether you get the shot or not, obviously I'm encouraging you to do that. And if you want help, do reach out and I can try to help you get connected with a clinic in your area. Um, but the mask, you know, it's not gonna do anything to your body at all in terms of, you know, people are worried about uh, the vaccines or, you know, hesitant or uncertain. Uh, masks are just a piece of thing that you put on your face. It's really, really, really safe. So definitely wear a mask. Germs come out your mouth and nose. And if everyone in a particular area wears masks, the overall exposure, if anybody in there has COVID or anything else, is dramatically reduced. So that's really the situation we want, is everybody wearing masks, both vaccinated and unvaccinated, uh, for as long as there are unvaccinated people anyway. And uh, that's going to cut down on COVID really a lot. It'll just, you know, that way the virus multiplies when it infects a new person, it gets into your body, it hijacks your cells, and it causes your body cells to replicate the virus. And then you can spread it to somebody else. But if it stops hopping from body to body, well, then it just stays in the one person. Your immune system eventually fights it off. Hopefully. I mean, some people do die from it. So it just shuts you down in that case. But either way, the virus stops hopping from person to person and eventually transmission ends. It's, you know, the virus dies out because it doesn't have any new hosts. That's the situation ultimately we're looking for. Uh, so, you know, Honestly, I feel like Trump was almost doing a better job, like to the extent and I don't want to credit Trump for that. Really, it was the as far as I know, the governors of the states, they did the executive orders and the mandates of the shutdowns and the state of emergency orders and all that stuff. Um, that was really working. I mean, you can see the curve go down uh, at least, you know, uh, until they decided to do more reopening and then the winter. But uh, that's what we need to go back to. But as far as the vaccines, yes, we wholeheartedly uh, endorse them. And please do reach out if you have questions or are having trouble um, finding a place in your community to get vaccinated. So thanks for listening. We're going to wrap it up there. And I'm going to thank the current patrons whose names are on the screen. All of your contributions are very much appreciated and are just on a morale level also encouraging for me to keep doing the channel. Stick around because we are doing a lot more videos now. I had a busy summer, but I am getting uh, more of an opening again and uh, planning to do uh, a lot more videos on the channel. Thanks, and we'll catch you in the next one.